dear sisters and brothers i welcome you all to the feast of the presentation of christ in the temple 40 days ago we celebrated the birth of our lord jesus christ now we recall the day on which he was presented in the temple when he was offered to the father and shown to his people today we celebrate both the joy of his coming and his searching judgment by looking back to the day of his birth and looking forward to the coming days of his passion Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, as your only begotten Son was presented and received in the temple, so may we welcome and proclaim him as the light of the nations and the glory of your people, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke chapter 2 verses from 22 to 40. Glory to Christ our Savior. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. 
and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything, Recurred by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be accepted in thy sight, O Lord. Amen. My text comes from our reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, and words from verses 30 to 32. These eyes of mine have seen your salvation, which you have made ready in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the nations. The presentation of Christ in the temple, or candle mass, is all about endings and beginnings, and this year very strikingly fits in with what is happening in the world around us. The scientific experts tell us we are nearing the end of the second phase of the COVID epidemic in the United Kingdom and looking forward to the brave new world resulting from vaccines, gradually reducing infections and the introduction of two more vaccines in the last week subject to their approval, can only help that situation as the year progresses. There are, of course, the doom mongers who look back to the historical records of the Spanish flu in the early 20th century when there were three phases and a lot more deaths. But my task today is not to spread rumour and false news, but to focus on this theme of beginnings and endings. My wife Janet has been a devoted servant of the Anglican Church for more years than she cares to remember. And one facet of that is her love of candles. The cathedral most familiar to her, because she spent much of her life in that area, is Chichester. It was in the 1990s that Janet invited me to attend a fundraising evening for the cathedral. Quite normal, you would say. But this was very different because it involved a very solemn service on the one hand, but on the other hand, both exciting and moving. I come from a Christian strand that is very wary of candles because of persecution and candles being associated with papism. So for me, this was something of a real revelation. The evening was entitled simply, An Evening with the Benedictines. 
The service was the Benedictine evening prayer, with no music, but a cathedral absolutely flooded with light from literally hundreds of flickering candles. The whole effect of the evening was a powerful feeling of the presence of the Holy Spirit moving among a congregation which was filled with people ranging from the devout to the Philistine. All, without exception, were moved, especially me, who at that time had not yet felt the call to ministry. The old purpose of Candlemas was that as it comes midway in the middle of winter, as we look forward to lighter days, Candlemas was used at a time when there was no electricity for the purpose of blessing candles. More significantly for us today, it marks the end of Epiphany as we turn from celebrating Christ's birth to the beginnings of Christ's adult ministry. Our reading from Luke's Gospel has some wonderful contrasts in it. You have the young earthly parents of Jesus bringing their teenage son Jesus to the temple as church rules required. There were two aspects to these Jewish laws. First, it was for the circumcision of Christ and for the purification of Mary. In total contrast, they are received by what some would describe derisorily as the old crocs in the form of Simeon and Anna. It was a situation I often felt in ministry, as I had the privilege of baptism on many occasions. Young couples, less than half my age, bringing children who could be my great-grandchildren. One important point that comes from this reading is that we must never think of ourselves as redundant in God's service, and that we must look to serve in some way till God calls us to higher service. Even if age and infirmity force us to change the form of service we give, Simeon is granted the privilege of blessing Jesus as he prepares for his earthly ministry. God has honoured his promise to Simeon to be a witness to Christ's forthcoming ministry before God calls Simeon to higher service. And Anna, at the age of 84, a widow, also has a role here in praying for the new ministry of Jesus. Both Simeon and Anna have the key roles of recognising Jesus as the Son of God and his role in helping humanity to serve God properly. Nowadays, many people poo-poo the kind of ritual, the presentation in the temple, or indeed Candlemas exemplifies, on the basis that there are more urgent things to do in life. The New Interpreter's Commentary on our Bible passage stresses the fact that it is important to recover the mystery of life and the transcendence of everyday experience through ritual celebrations. Candlemas, then, starts the process that leads later this month to the beginning of Lent. The importance of beginnings and endings have been very much highlighted by all the necessary COVID rules. Universally, people have complained that because of the rules, they haven't been able to attend funerals or indeed, or indeed say goodbye to those dying. It is easy to say technology can overcome this, but physical presence is crucial. I lost a good friend in the past few weeks and not going to his funeral 
was only partially helped by seeing the funeral by live streaming. Similarly, at the other end of the spectrum, baptisms are very much on hold, or very limited, and having a wedding is a bit like climbing K2 in winter. Marking beginnings and endings is important because it helps us move on in God's service. Goals in life are very important to everyone. I don't know how many of you saw the fascinating interview with a former Chief Medical Officer for Scotland on Sunday morning in Reflections on the Quay when he talked about health being about more than mending broken and ill people. It was, as is Candlemas, about recognising people and ensuring they have a purpose to their lives. Whatever age we can, look at the work of Simeon and Anna and see how prayer and diligent, humble service can and do change lives. Today, then, is about celebrating the end of the Epiphany and looking forward to how each of us, in the coming weeks, can in all sorts of ways serve God as Christ did in helping the Kingdom of God on earth become a fulfilled reality. Let us say together the Candlemas prayer. Lord God, you are the source of everlasting light. Your son, our beloved Jesus, was presented in the temple 40 days after his birth. He was recognized by Simeon and Anna and welcomed as the promised Messiah. May we, like them, behold the glory of the Lord Jesus. Grant that we may stand before you with hearts cleansed by your forgiving love. May we serve you all our days and make your name known as we worship you as our Lord. So may we come by your grace to eternal life. Amen. In this time of COVID, millions of people dying and arguments over vaccines we believe we are living through frightening and unprecedented times. In some ways we are. The health of the planet, and consequently ours, is suffering in ways previously unknown. But Joseph and Mary were also living in turbulent times. Those of the Roman occupation of their world when they took the baby Jesus to present it at the temple. But, different from in modern society, Simeon and Anna, in the reading today, the senior citizens of Luke's version of Jesus' birth, were not in a senior citizen's home, but in the temple where they were respected as understanding more than anyone else. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for our being here today on the presentation of Christ the King. Please come into us as we pray. Heavenly Father, please lead us all in our lives, whatever our age or experience, that we may continually learn and grow in your ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, please let your Holy Spirit Move among the crowded wards of hospitals, comforting frightened patients 
and strengthening weary doctors, nurses and support staff. Please, may your Holy Spirit guide those who have to tell someone their loved one has died. Please be with families and all loved ones of those who are ill. Please comfort the loved ones of those who have died. Please let your Holy Spirit move among residents and staff of care homes as they struggle to keep free from COVID. May your Holy Spirit move among all personnel carrying out COVID injections across the UK. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, please be with those we know who are ill. We pray for Lynn Davison, Janice Moffat, Vincent, Brian Gibson, Anne Fan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, our Lord Jesus Christ was born in turbulent and confusing times. Please be with all those who are experiencing childbirth today in these unusual times. Help those families who are trying to cope with isolation. Please be with those people who are isolated in flats during lockdown. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, please guide UK leaders and leaders throughout the world in handling the pandemic. Please let your Holy Spirit move in those countries across the world which were already experiencing severe poverty and lack of resources before the pandemic came upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, please hear our prayer for the health of your planet and its wildlife. Please give strength to all those working to stop and reverse the harm being done to the global environment. Please guide everyone involved in tracing the source and cause for the COVID epidemic. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for all these dedicated people. Please guide each and every one of us in our respect for your world, now and always. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Go in the light and peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.